On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about something that's not metal. Not metal. On this episode, we talk about the heaviest flamenco album that has ever been made. <laughs> Passion, Grace, and Fire. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. And today, yeah, we're uh, we're starting a new month, and we decided for this month that we're going to be doing uh, uh, non-metal albums. I've chosen a, a, a specific theme that I am going to make OJ sit through. but Which is fine. You, I've already listened to some of it, and I yeah. enjoy it. So. so you came at me with uh. Uh, a curveball here <laughs> and uh, uh, brought... Something that I I enjoyed th- it thoroughly, <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed. It was gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful music. It's a album called Passion, Grace, and Fire, which is a flamenco jazz type album. It's it's all, uh, I suppose, classical guitar or flamenco guitar, and I think one bass drum in the background somewhere in there and clapping. Yes, there's and some clapping. clapping in there's there, some of there's some. It's flamenco. You got to have some clapping. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll get to talking about that in a in a while. But uh, first, things happened this week <laughs> that that OJ was a part of as well uh, uh, in my which, life specifically. Trying to figure out which things you're talking about here. Um, specifically on on Monday, we were at work and <laughs> I was about to go to I, right. I was about to go to lunch. And usually I just walk home because I live very close to <laughs> to our workplace. And uh, I thought, you know, I haven't uh, gotten a sub sandwich in a while. I'm going to head on over to the friendly neighborhood subway and Mm -hmm. grab myself one of those. I shall start my car. Nope. (laughs) Wasn't going to, wasn't happening. Uh, We're we're in a pretty nasty cold snap right now. Like all of February. I mean, yeah, all of February February, has has absolutely sucked. But uh, we're in, we had a brief remission of like low teens for a while there. Good album. Yeah. Also, yeah. good good album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> low teens by every time I die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, we had we had a, a sort of a brief a brief period of of slightly warmer temperatures that rarely I think once got above freezing. I think we were above freezing for like one day in February. Uh, the first day of February. Yeah. That, that, that yeah, it. that sounds right. Yeah, according to it was uh, Jim Olson talking on uh, TV today, our local reporter talking about how. Minot has been below freezing every day since February second, since my birthday. Good God, I'm just I, I'm so tired of it. I know, me too. I've it just been wears you down. I've been dreaming of summer for the last week, and just like like thinking about, oh, what's my apartment gonna look like? I've been <laughs> I've been you know opening up the windows, trying to get more sunlight, and trying to figure out because I've just got a blanket hanging over this window, mm-hmm. and it. Uh, uh, creates an absolute furnace in the summer sure. inside uh, of there. If you uh, look on your side, you will see that the shades, if you look up, yeah, I'm looking up here. the shades have been melted. Damn. Holy mackerel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need to replace those um, and put some, some film on there. But I've digressed from the story I was going to tell. It's been very cold, and my car uh, has not been plugged in all winter, which if you're not from the north, mm-hmm. uh a lot of cars here have uh, a block heater in them to keep your engine slightly warm so that the oil doesn't uh, uh, gum up. And, right, so the block doesn't freeze. Yeah, so the block doesn't freeze. Which doesn't actually help your battery anyway. Yeah, I. so the problem that ended up happening was my battery was dead. Yeah, it froze because uh, you hadn't driven since the, the previous Thursday. Yeah. And that's what happens up here if it's below freezing and you have a battery that's not brand spanking new. Yeah, I found out that it was actually, I thought we had replaced the battery. It is actually the original. Yeah. Um, because the last time I had battery trouble was actually in the summer mm-hmm. uh, a couple years ago, and it was simply because the, the contacts had become so dirty and corroded. Uh, and that's, I think, what happened. All right, that, that's what continued a problem. Yeah. 
is because you were helpful enough to bring by your battery charger after work because I had neighbors that had parked next to me, so I couldn't uh, <laughs> couldn't get a jump. You know, couldn't get a jump. <laughs> I could have talked to one of them, but I don't like talking to strangers. My parents <laughs> my parents taught me the importance of stranger danger and. Uh, that has uh, held with me ever since. You know, your man in his twenties. I think <laughs> eventually, what? eventually you can get past that. I thought I was no, 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 no. Stranger danger till I die, man. <laughs> Stranger danger till I fucking die. You never know who's going to be a serial killer. Good job, Mrs. Borner. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Uh, no, so it was. It, you know, the battery was completely drained. So you gave me a jump. And uh, I decided that was probably a good time to go to Walmart and get myself an extension cord so I could plug in. Because I had an extension cord that was nowhere near long enough to get me to the nearest uh, post that had outlets on it. And um, I went to go get that, parked at Walmart, turned off the car, and decided, okay, probably a good idea to turn it back on. Uh, with my fob as I'm walking away, so it's mm-hmm. running while I'm, you know, going into the store. Uh, once again, once again, completely and utterly dead. <laughs> uh, the the charging did not take, and uh, it was just completely dead. So once I came back out, uh, there was a guy who was sitting in his car, and it was running uh, very close to mine. And so I uh, signaled for him to roll down the window and asked him for a jump and he was Ooh. he was yeah so i you know wow. i'm sorry mom impressive i'm sorry mom but i i i you know i disobeyed stranger danger <laughs> <laughs> like that one time i picked up a seemingly homeless dude yeah. at <laughs> i think i've told that story on the podcast yeah. but uh we'll we'll get to that some other time <laughs> but yeah he he was kind enough to give me a jump and i have jumper cables in my car because I live in North Dakota. Sure. If you live in North Dakota or in the north somewhere of the United States and you don't have jumper cables in your car, you are living on the edge. <laughs> you are, you're, you're a dummy. You're, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that they're brave, but <laughs> yeah. brave, you know, bravery and stupidity are, are two sides of the same coin. There's an overlapping magisterium going yes, on right there. <laughs> yes. uh, so I, I got a jump from him and then... Drove home, or I drove to Sonic first and got some food. Drove home, sat in my car and ate it while I called my dad to see if what he thought. Because the guy who I got the jump from thought maybe there's something wrong with the alternator that it hadn't charged it. But I think it's just that the battery, is, the contacts on the battery are so corroded that that sure. didn't help. And and you live really close to Walmart. So yeah, it, it, it was not that long charge. of a drive. Yeah. So to make sure to do some troubleshooting to see like, oh, if the alternator is shot. It won't quite matter how long I drive it. Uh, it's still, you know, the battery, it still won't charge up the battery. So I kept it running, finished my food, and then went on a, a about a, a, I suppose, 30-minute round trip uh, south of Minot and drove back in and then uh, parked, turned it off, turned it back on. Started it was working. Fun. Started it today. It was working. So I was concerned for a second because I couldn't see the exhaust. Which was weird, but then once I got a bit closer while I was walking home, I saw the exhaust and it worked. So sweet. Yeah, that was. Thank you again for for the jump there. Hey man, that was that was just whenever like something bad happens with my car, <laughs> I start feeling so helpless because I I had a mechanics shop class in high school and it was I don't know how I passed. <laughs> like the the. <laughs> theoretical stuff is is fine i know how an engine works theoretically yes i understand the concept the mechanics of how to take it apart and put it back together are completely fucking alien to me uh so yeah i uh, i'm kind of helpless when it comes to car i can change a tire because changing mm-hmm. a tire is not that hard and you have to be able to another thing you have to be able to know, know how to do here yeah a tire change a tire because it gets cold and your tire will go flat because of the cold yeah uh, I need to I need to fill up the pressure. Uh, they're not flat, but it's giving me a little pressure warning. Sure. But I think the the pressure warning in my car mm. is fairly sensitive because it does that every winter. And I go outside and look at the tires, and it's like they look fine. <laughs> and pr- you know, press on them a little bit, and it's like th- they don't seem flat to me. But anyhow, uh, other things that have happened. To, oh, uh, this is a. A uh, segment maybe that we can call story time with OJ. Okay. Whenever there's a story in your life that I think is interesting that we might not come across uh, uh, di- diegetically, <laughs> to use some uh, cinema terms. 
Okay, so I used to work in, in TV. I worked in TV, and uh, it was the summer of 1999. They they asked me, they said, hey, you want to go work in conjunction with a, a thing called Rock in the Hills, which is up near Botno, North Dakota. Okay. And so they said, I want you to go and, and hold the cameras and do gaffing, pull cable, do you know all technical work for putting the bands on the big screen. You know, you go to a concert, yeah. there's a big screen behind the band that, that has shots, footage of the band up yep. on the big screen. So the people that are far away from the stage can see a little bit better. Sure. So there, you know, there's got to be cameras doing that work. Mm-hmm. And so they paid me you know, what amounted to minimum. We're only going to pay you minimum wage for this. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. You, you turned into me. Matthew McConaughey for all a right, second. Right, hey, right. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. I did it. Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey. Uh, <laughs> I got it. I'm so proud of myself. Got it in one. Thank you. Uh, thank you, you. Thank you. You get the clap. So uh, I'm up there. <laughs> In, in Botno, and I'm <clears throat> I'm working the stage, and one of the, I mean it's a multi night festival. I think it was the Friday night show. I'm I'm backstage. I'm pulling cable because there's a guy up front, you know, running yeah. out with a camera, and he can't trip over the cable, so it's my yep, job to pull yep. the cable. You were the best boy. I was the best boy. Well, no, I wasn't the best boy. I was the. You were uh, just one of the boys. I was I was a uh, a grip. Okay. I was, grip. I was a key grip. A key grip. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm backstage, and I'm doing that. And the headliner for that night was none other than the Nuge. It was the Ted, Nuge. Ted Nugent did his thing out on stage, and you know he wangle tango and he's live there Nuge and, on stage. Live Nuge on stage, shot an arrow at a thing, and you know, and, you know, and hate black people. And then he came playing back. his <laughs> album Nuge Speech. <laughs> <laughs> and he, no, he didn't say anything racist. But he came back. He didn't say anything racist then. No, then <laughs> at that moment. Uh, but he came backstage, and and I didn't realize like he's only five foot four, five foot five. Serious? I didn't. Okay, yeah. I didn't know Ted Nugent was was that small. Yeah, you know, well, I, I, either that or was uneven back there. But you know, because you yeah. you look at uh, there was a band called Damn Yankees. If you remember that. I it don't. Just, it, uh, well, there were a super group back in the early 90s, and the other members were members of Styx and uh, Night Ranger, which, okay. and, and compared to them, he was a towering, you know, monster. He was Godzilla, yeah. compared to this, which tells me that those guys, like Jack Blades, is two feet tall. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, okay, so okay. the Nuge is backstage, and he's standing next to me. And he's getting ready to go back out on because everybody's like, no, 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 no. Did they say that, or did they say like Ted or something? And they were yelling or something. Nugent. But I'm just picturing a whole crowd saying Nuge over and over again. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> negative. That does. <laughs> it sounds like a slur for a race that doesn't exist. Nuge. <laughs> you Nuge. Why are you being such a Nuge right now? Oh, dude, stop it. So I'm back there and I'm standing. He's standing next to me, and he's getting ready to go back out because you got to do your encore. Yeah, uh, and uh, so he. We changes. don't have to, but sometimes it's nice. So as a performer, it is nice. Yeah. and so he changes his vest from his uh, leopard that he killed vest to okay. the zebra that he killed vest, and and changes his hat and he gives me sort of little nods. Was that there. hat made of something he killed? Possibly, it was dark. Uh, I think it was straw. Okay. It was the straw. straw he had cut down with his sickle. <laughs> with his sickle and his bow and arrow for some reason. So <laughs> he's and he's and he does this and uh and he runs back out on stage and it was seconds later. As I'm standing there holding this cable and I start to gag. Oh, and no. and I couldn't figure out what the fuck is going on. Why am I my eyes watering? And then I realized Ted farted next to me. <laughs> Ted Nugent <laughs> farted on me. What uh, the? Oh, 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 and it wasn't just some regular. This was a manly venison this eating. Was a, this was a Ted Nugent raw meat beer fart. Yeah, yes, it was. It was, and it was awful. And the funny thing is, is I had an earpiece in, and the guy who had the camera, because we're all on a network of, of, of yeah. talking to each other, and the guy who was holding the camera said, "What the fuck is that, man?" <laughs> and he was like upwind. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think the Ted Ted Nugent just let one rip, man. Ah, uh, that was a, impressive. He's a nasty man with nasty farts. Well, yes, most of us are at times. I suppose I can't really can't really fault him. He was in Botno, yeah. North Dakota. <laughs> Who does he have to impress? Uh, I suppose no one. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's Ted fucking Nugent. Like, <laughs> not a not a great guy. But if there's anyone, <laughs> if there's anyone who's going to fart and not give a shit, 
I'd I'd say Ted Nugent. He may have given a shit. It uh, may yeah, have there happened. might have been something in there. <laughs> there might have something solid. And just for the record, that weekend the best act was Poison. Okay. Poison was the best act that weekend. Who else was that? Was there anyone like any other? Oh yeah. Big bands there. Oh well, I mean it was a lot of classic rock. There was it was uh, Thirty Eight Special was there. Okay. Molly Hatchet. Mo- the singer from Molly Hatchet was clearly on lots of cocaine. Because he was standing what, what year was this? 1999. Okay. They were partying like it was the year it was. Exactly. We, we all were. I mean, yeah. I'm, every night there I crawled into someone else's tent. It was one morning I woke up in a stranger's tent. Damn. Was, yeah, like, oh, thanks for letting me crash on your floor. I, I was jumping through fire the night before, and now, <laughs> and now I'm, I'm hungover and i got to go to work. So going to start a festival. April Wine is going to take the stage. I'm going to get out there. i got to go get farted on by Ted Nugent. <laughs> Your one of your brushes with greatness. That was one of my brushes with greatness. <laughs> I was on, I was on stage at some point with uh, the Little River Band. If you know who that is, I I have definitely heard of them. I'm yeah, not I'm not familiar with their work necessarily, but soft it's soft rock from the 70s and yeah. 80s from Australia. They're uh, okay, and they they did great. They played wonderful. It was one of those things where it was a lot of classic rock bands that took the stage that I gained a new appreciation for. Okay, yeah. that maybe you hadn't seen bef- seen live before, and right. it was. It was that's I, you know we've talked about this before it, it i think rarely will seeing a band live uh uh depreciate your appreciation for a band right like like every pretty much every band that i've seen live that i already liked i liked more after seeing them live and there are a fair number of bands that i was unsure about having listening having listened to their recorded material mm-hmm. than seeing them live and going yeah i get it I get it now. This is, you know, I I dig this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I I I think yeah, going to see bands live is uh, you should always you should always give it a shot. Give them a shot. I mean, I, I went to go see <laughs> I went to go see Limp Biscuit. Oh boy, I, I told you that right? How did that? I I I you might have, but I can't recall how it went. Yeah, for I you. went to see it was it was Limp Biscuit, it was Lincoln Park, and Metallica was the uh, the, the main. Ad, that is a weird headliner. lineup. It was weird. It was, I it mean, was... it's not that weird, I guess, for the early two thousands, but no. like, still, that's just like you don't think of any of those bands being together. No, you you don't. And 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 I watched I watched Fred Durst take. It was at Mile High Stadium, and I watched you know, Fred just work the whole crowd like. Like everybody just in this big football arena, just you know, and he was working. He was getting them to just yeah. sing along and everything. And he was walking around the whole thing, the whole hundred yards was his arena. And would you say he got the crowd rolling, rolling, rolling? <laughs> he did. He actually did. I'm like, and I was doing the thing with my fist in there. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? This is Limp Biscuit. This God damn it! Stop it! <laughs> I'm not hating this right now. <laughs> damn you, Limp Biscuit! <laughs> How dare you make me like you? I may have actually said those words. It's a, it's a possible. possibility. Mm-hmm. A possible. A possibility. I wouldn't have minded seeing Lincoln Park. Uh, they were good. I miss part of Lincoln Park because my brother doesn't know how to change the oil in his Jeep. He he no. also he also passed auto class <laughs> somehow and then and, and, and uh, <laughs> didn't didn't retain any of it. What's with the blue smoke? Oh Christ! You need a ring job now. <laughs> great. Well, a ring job? A ring that job. sounds great. <laughs> Where do I pay for that? <laughs> Ask Robert Kraft. <laughs> Boom! Oh, no! Just oh, dated yeah. this podcast. Yes, indeed. Uh, okay, other things <laughs> that we can talk about just for a little while. Uh, I briefly today started listening to Panopticon. Which sure. is uh, a Kentucky, well, formerly Kentucky-based. Now I believe they're Minnesota-based. Uh, uh, bluegrass black metal fusion band. That's awesome. Uh, I think their their latter work is far more indicative of black metal and and other styles, but uh, still contains a, a fair amount of sort of bluegrass type music. Awesome. Uh, and their their first album is just called Kentucky. Uh, and it yeah it opens up with just some straight ass uh, I almost said straight ass. <laughs> some, you may have a new phrase going there. That's some straight ass bluegrass. That's some straight ass bluegrass right there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's you know bluegrass is kind of one of those things that I I I actually kind of like a little bit. Well, it's brilliantly done when it's yeah. done well. I mean, I, I I kind of I think my thing is is I appreciate instrumental bluegrass a lot more. Mm-hmm. Not to say that oh it's, you know I don't because. 
I hate that argument where that people you know use for metal, where it's like that sounded great until they started singing. Yeah, uh, especially when they make the air quotes. They started yeah. singing. So like, it, it's not quite. <laughs> Fuck you. It's not quite that way for me because there are definitely some fantastic singers in bluegrass. Sure. It's just I, what I seem to latch on the most to is the instrumentals, and that's what I tend to enjoy the most. Mm-hmm. Although if you're a good storyteller, you're a good storyteller, and that's that's kind of what bluegrass is about. Yeah, I can listen to Flatten Scruggs all day. Flatten Scruggs. Flatten Scruggs. Yeah. Flatten Scruggs. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great band name. There's a, a bluegrass is. band that one of the uh, there's a woman from Washburn who's in a, a big, well, I don't know if, I, I, I imagine they're still doing stuff, but fairly popular bluegrass band that uh, would go around. Um, I can't remember the name of the band. Uh, but one time we had a, we had a fundraiser for uh, the national speech convention that me and a couple of other guys were going to be going to that summer. Mm-hmm. And uh, they played there for like 10 people. Uh, but we, we got up and sang with them and I did, uh, they played ring of fire so I could do a Johnny cash impression, which he does very well, by the way, just for the record. Well, I don't, I I mean, I, I, I can't, now I can't (laughs) do it. Now you're on the spot. You're welcome. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks. I don't, I don't know if I do a very good Johnny cash impression because I'm Johnny cash is a good singer and I wouldn't call myself a good singer. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I cannot sing acapella. No. Is my biggest thing. If 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 I ever sound good, I think there has to be music there. I've tried clean singing before. You need a uh, uh, like recorded, <laughs> and it's just I can't I can't stand it. I sang in a commercial today. I don't know if you heard that or not. I think I did. Yeah, I sang Happy Birthday. Nice. Yeah, for a car wash commercial. Well, I mean, <laughs> do you have the copyright for that? Uh, for happy that, birthday? That's fine now. You can, really? Yeah, that's it. Just, is fine now. They died. The ladies, the ladies who oh, were, wow. they, they're both dead. So I, it's not you're not free to do it. But I thought copyright was like like death plus seventy years now. I I think that's it, it is. It has been seventy I, years I, since they died. I think maybe yeah. There was there was something in the prep here not too long ago about how okay. hey you can sing happy birthday without paying anybody now. That's cool. Uh, there's that because it was the old uh, Kumail Nanjiani joke. Uh, talking about how in Pakistan they didn't have uh, Happy Birthday because of copyright stuff, mm-hmm. so their version of Happy Birthday was uh, Happy Birthday, <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> and just that over it, it. It's it's a great bit, yeah, uh, classic Kumail Nanjiani bit. Okay, uh, <laughs> so what what happened? What did we do? <laughs> We listened to Passion, Grace, and Fire. Indeed. Which is uh, a, a album that is a collaboration. It's not made by a band. It's just a collaboration between three brilliant musicians and guitar three, players. Three guys sitting in a room with guitars. And yeah. those guys were John McLaughlin, uh, Al Di Miola, and Paco de Lucia. Lucia. Yep. Paco de Lucia. Yep. Paco de Lucia. Yeah. And they're all... Guitarists, not I. Th- I know at least John McLaughlin is not specifically flamenco uh, oriented. I no, I, none of them are. None of them are. Really, them are. they're all they're all jazz musicians. Okay. Well, Paco de Lucia probably more than the rest of them, but like Aldo Miola, that's how I, I got introduced to this. It was uh one of his albums. It was uh what's the damn is the album, is Electric Rendezvous was the name of the album. Uh, that was, sounds trippy. It, yeah, well, yeah, and it was all very trippy jazz sort of. Uh, all right, let's listen and enjoy. What's up? Some, uh, this is Electric Rendezvous. Electric Rendezvous, and it had uh, the the song "Passion, Grace, and Fire" on it. Okay, and it was the three. It was a different version, but it was still the three of them playing. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it was obvious, and then I thought, man, where do I find more of that? And so I, I this is before the days of the internet. Yeah, and I went and I sought it out, and I found this this album, and this is one of those albums that I would listen to between. Like as a palate cleanser between yeah. like listening to, to metal. I'm listening to some just metal and now, yeah. now I feel like I'm drowning. I'm gonna to listen to this. <laughs> yeah. I I think that is a, a, a really great place for it. Other than it is a fantastic compositional work. Mm. Uh uh but I, I think that is a, a you know, a pretty pretty good way to think of it in in a sense it's very good for that mm-hmm. because it is different but it scratches some of the same itches oh yeah do you like fast really intricately played guitar yeah well, shit <laughs> I, as i said in the intro this is this is the heaviest flamenco album certainly i've ever listened to you know because i listen to so many flamenco albums 
out of all the flamenco albums you listen to, this is the heaviest. And also the only. Yeah. Uh, but God, like there were so many parts where to me it, it felt like the intro to an Opeth or a, a Gojira song that never started. Sure. And the, like the intro just kept going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, they started doing the wacky stuff with just the acoustic part. Right, like, and they are using picks, by the way. They are using picks. Okay, this is not a fingerstyle album. Yeah, I, I, that was something on my first listen that I had to ask about because I was like, this, there's no way they're playing this fingerstyle, because, uh, well, it was, it was sort of a thing because a lot of times you will like, I think, pl- I don't know where qu- where quite I'm going with this, but uh, uh, like, there's palm muting me, in there. Yeah. There's, uh, there's to me like classical guitar is typically played finger style, but flamenco mm. I think is often uh, used with a pick because yes, you get a much be. you get a much sharper sound mm-hmm. I think with the pick, which is really all about really all what flamenco is is just really sharp, really quick. Yeah, like, like that's a riff on the album. Does that not sound like a fucking metal riff? Yeah, yeah. It would be. I would love to actually just take this and filter it through distortion. Yeah, just to see and what see it how, sounds like, like. See what that sounds like, because it's it like seriously, it there are some heavy ass riffs on here. They're just they're just on acoustic guitar, and and it's like it's it's fantastic by itself. But I would be interested to to hear it through that sort of filter to to, to hear it with you know some. Some really nice distortion, right? Because I think that's I, I think that's part of the beauty of it being all played, you know, clean acoustic. Is that mm. everything sounds so clear? Sure. Um, and I think if you use too much or the wrong type of distortion, you would lose a lot of what is so special about this album. Mm-hmm, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you played it like a, a, a clean channel or something, uh, maybe you'd get some of that same sort of thing, but like too much. If you put it through like a uh, like an HM HM three or whatever it is, the <laughs> the death metal pedal, yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> that that every Swedish death metal band the used HM three, yeah. the HM three, yeah. If you put it through that, it this this would just sound like complete mush, mush, <laughs> yeah. complete noise. Uh, which maybe hey, maybe you'd get a great uh, noise noise album. <laughs> yeah, this is my new noise album. It took us like three years to write because it's so complex, and we're using like flamenco things. I couldn't hear any of that. It was just. <laughs> <laughs> of course, these guys are all in their sixties and seventies now. John McLaughlin is seventy-seven yeah. years old. Mahavishnu Orchestra. I recommend if you ever get the chance to listen to Mahavishnu Orchestra, get that a, a okay. spin as well. Yeah, I'm like I, I want more of this because this is this is just genius. Yeah, and it goes by so quickly. Well, it's, yeah, it's only like. Seven songs, eight yeah, songs? it's it's not a very long album, and it 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 blasts by because this. I mean, there are some parts that are a bit slower, but even sure. the parts that are slower, that's a relative term. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> most of this stuff is still very up tempo, uh, and this is all. Uh, it's like I said, it's all acoustic guitar, or I, I I'm trying to figure out if it's. Like acoustic guitar with steel strings, or if it is a classical guitar with nylon strings, it's it's hard to tell. Or it sometimes you can have both. Mm-hmm. One of them might be playing a, a you know a steel guitar. One of them might be playing. Well, it's not steel guitar. Well, not pedal steel guitar. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I mean steel guitar as in you it don't has know what you're steel. talking about. I mean, no. <laughs> I mean steel guitar as in ha- it has steel strings. Sure. Well, a lot of times you'll have that on like on an acoustic guitar. You'll have the the bottom three are are nylon and then the yeah. top three are round wound steel. Yeah, and you can do that. Or if it, or you might just have very, very thin, very sharp steel strings. Yeah. That's what I have on, on my guitar that I don't know how to play. As I believe they're the, the bottom three are just sharp steel. <laughs> uh gotta build up those calluses on your fingers. Sure. Yeah, I think it's it's a possibility that because there was some of it where I was like, that sounds like a steel string. Uh, but then other ones where it's like, well, maybe not. Uh, I'll, I don't know if it really matters all that much because it's it's. I I have difficulty describing it in any specific terms, other than I really really liked it and it was. I, I want to call it progressive flamenco almost. I think that would that would be accurate. I, or like I mean, just jazz flamenco because mm-hmm. it has 
jazz is known for having wacky ass time signatures which this has a lot of and this yes <laughs> certainly has a lot of and it's it can be more difficult to discern that when the guitarists are just blasting so fast but then you hear the the soul kick drum in the background mm-hmm. just one one pedal one head one kick drum and you hear that going in the background and it's yeah it's very clear like that is that is not uh even even time right there that's some right. that's- you, there's some wacky shit going on there Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't yeah. know if that picked up at all, but yeah, that's the <laughs> imagine that's being the drum yeah. imagine being the drummer. I, I wonder like I wonder if one of them just had the pedal Pro- in front probably, of them. Probably probably had that it was one of the three in the booth. Yeah, just had the drum in front of them. Uh you could, some of the percussion what I like is is that it's actually yeah. on the body of the guitar. Yep. I and I like that. I like percussive uh playing on acoustic guitar. Yeah. I enjoy that. Um there's a Irish folk uh folk singer songwriter named Glenn Hansard and he is sort of infamous for the number of guitars that he has had where uh he like he started out busking he was in like an indie rock band for the longest time and he continues to busk and has continued to busk for a long time really um he still you know he'll, he'll still go out on the streets of Dublin and, and busk when he's not currently do so- doing something because that's just that's like his church, basically. <laughs> is that's you know that's where he goes to clear his head and that sort of thing, awesome. um, and he knows all the. They did a CBS Sunday Morning special on him mm-hmm. uh, when he put out his first solo album, and uh, yeah, he can go around like so many different streets in bu- Dublin and find different buskers, and he knows every one of them. Nice, and he'll play play with them. Yeah, he, he he will play with them. Um, he did a, a special Christmas busking event with uh, with. Um, I think it was U2, and then there was one other uh, Irish folk musician that was there. The Cranberries. Uh, no, it was no. not. It was not that. But uh, <laughs> they were they were playing that, and Bono was singing, and sure, they were they were playing guitar together. Um, but uh, um, what the I was, what I was saying is he is known for uh, you know he does a, a fair amount of percussive tapping on his acoustic guitar, and the specific brand of guitar that he buys is a Takamine. And the the wood that they make the body out of is fairly soft, and because mm. he busks and strums so hard, mm. yeah, he wears through the lacquer and then eventually through the wood. Wow! And because he taps, he will s- like break holes in the frame of awesome. his guitar. And his oldest guitar that he still has that he doesn't really play anymore just looks <laughs> like it has been through a <laughs> war. It's hashed. <laughs> it's just it's almost completely trashed um and there there are multiple videos of him breaking strings while playing because he just he plays very hard mm-hmm. uh he puts a lot of force into his into his strums and i really really like him for these he stars in one of my favorite movies which is called once is a nice little uh sort of musical type movie. I mean, it's not strictly a musical, but it is a music movie. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just a great little independent movie from 2007. That year, they also won uh, uh, they won Best Original Song at the Oscars. Nice. Um, That's a thing that happened at the Oscars. I don't know if we even really want to talk about that. What happened at the at the Oscars? Just the Oscars I, happened. I never. Oh, the Oscar. Oh, yeah. I, I, the you know, I've never happened. watched the Oscars. Yeah, that, that's another awards show that you that you've never watched. I, yeah, I don't t- tend to watch uh, c- celebrities and famous people uh, blowing each other on, uh, <laughs> yeah. on TV. I just not something I, I yeah. care for. It's I, I don't know. Uh, like I had I hadn't seen any of the best best picture nominees, but you know the just the sort of the the backlash I think from from. Uh, Green Book winning uh, is is evidence enough to maybe that it, it shouldn't have won because it's like it's it might be misconstrued because some people think oh like the backlash is because people are racists it's like no there were movies that were also nominated for best picture that tackled the subject of race sure which I want to uh, see the Black Klansman yeah I Black really Klansman apparently Roma has some of that um, yeah. and by most people's uh, admission. Uh, those were both better movies mm-hmm. than Green Book, but Green Book was comfortable for old white people to watch, so sure. that's why it won. 
And uh, it, has, it has great actors in it. Yeah, it does have great actors. I love Viggo Mortensen. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, what is it, Ma- Mahersha Ali? Mahersha Ali, yeah. Mahersha. I, I, also great. Yeah, I've seen him and stuff. He's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But uh, apparently it was just kind of boring. It was just kind of boring. It was very safe, a very safe choice. And it's, you That's know, a bummer. Yeah. If it, if it got chosen just for the for it being, oh, this has a race element so we can say we're inclusive, but it's also, you know, the main character is still a, a, a white dude who's, you know, this old white dude learns not to be racist instead of instead of black guy infiltrates the fucking KKK. And, <laughs> Which is based on a real sto- yeah, true story. Yeah, it's based on a true story. Uh, so and tr- one thing that I learned about the production of that movie, because Topher Grace plays, you know, the... I think the head of the KKK yeah. in that movie. Uh-huh. Um, and apparently he was like so kind of David ups- Duke, I think. Yeah, David Duke. Yeah. It, he, apparently he was so upset by having to play that character, uh, not having to play that character, but like he, he, you know, playing that character put him in, in such a state of mind that uh, one of the things that I had no idea he did is he edits a lot in his free time. Really? He will do like fan edits. And uh, apparently he made like a, a 85 minute long uh, edit down <laughs> of the Star Wars prequels into one movie. Really? Um, and it like I had no idea that's a thing that he did. Uh, is he will just edit just random stuff. He's not like he's an actor first mm-hmm. and foremost, and I think he directs too. But like, yeah, he will he will edit. And Can he put ACE thing. after his name? He possibly could. <laughs> and according to people who have seen like what you know what he's done, apparently he's very good at it. So. I kind of want to see his uh, remake of the. Uh, apparently, that's not out. There is a trailer mm-hmm. for his his you know re edit of the three movies, but uh, I I think he's keeping the the actual edit to himself. But there are apparently instructions mm-hmm. on how to do it yourself. Wow, <laughs> which is a, a challenge all its own. I don't have that kind of time. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was just interesting little little tidbit about Topher Grace. I would love to see the uh, the prequels boiled down to eighty five minutes. Yeah, I would love to see that. There's a lot Just in cut all the been... cut out all the fucking political bits. Yeah, <laughs> all the fat. Strangely though, those are some of my favorite parts. Really, in, in a weird sense, because it's it's like you you get a sense of world building almost. That that's the one thing that I do like about the prequels. I also like the memes, but like sure. the the whole prequel memes thing on Reddit especially has sort of become like it has become the joke in the sense that. Uh, at first, prequel memes got started as like a, hey, you know, we're kind of making fun of the movies. Sure. And now that subreddit is filled with a bunch of people that actually really like the prequel movies. <laughs> uh, and so it has become bad form to bash them on there. Um, but uh, I, I do really like all of the world building that went on in the prequels. And I really like the Clone Wars animated series. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I. Which I, is not the prequels. It's not, t- I mean, it's not one of the movies, but no. I, it's built. You know, it's set during the time and with the characters and the elements that they the movies introduce. And it's better written. Uh, yes, it is better written. <laughs> a series written for Cartoon Network was better than what George Lucas could come up with. Uh, and it, it has better examples of the of the characters that you thought people would be in the original films when Obi-Wan is describing what Anakin was like before he became Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. In the movies, you never see him and Anakin being really good friends. You just hear about cool shit that they've done. You never see them, like, really, really collaborate in the sense that they get along because in the movies, it's always Anakin being a little shit and being angsty and not listening to Obi-Wan. And in the series, we we get to see them be friends. Uh, and be best friends and Which brothers. Which would have been great if they'd have put that in the movies. Yeah, but they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, but I think watching the Clone Wars is is worth it in itself. But you do have to do some weird, some weird gymnastics with the Clone Wars mm-hmm. because Cartoon <laughs> Network, for some reason, the way I don't know if they aired this way or if it's just the way they are on streaming services. Mm-hmm. The episodes are not in chronological arcs. Oh, like so there will out be of sequence. Yeah, there, there. Some, a lot of them are out of sequence and take place at different points in the Clone Wars than what you should be at. You know, season one or season three. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something in season three that happens like right after episode two, or there's something. 
you know, there's a, a one episode that focuses entirely on clone troopers, and you don't see those characters for another two, you know, two seasons. Sure. And the the clone trooper arcs are probably the best in the whole series. Uh, that it, like this, it really really makes you attached to what are essentially disposable people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, it's it. I really like the Clone Wars series. I I haven't actually sat down and watched all of it, but I've watched a fair bit. Um, cause it was, my roommate had it on quite often. And so I would watch, uh, you know, certain bits here and there. I mm-hmm. think the last three seasons are almost all chronological, but like the, f- I think it's the first two or three are all over the place. So there's like a, you can go online to find, here's what order you watch them in. <laughs> Not the order which, they released them. Yeah. Which you shouldn't have to do. It's no. bizarre. It, sh- uh, it should be fine. Like watching Pulp Fiction. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Pulp Fiction was designed to be that way, though. Well, sure, but I have to imagine that, that to some extent, so was the Clone Wars uh, animated series. I feel like it wasn't. You feel like it wasn't? I, I feel like they made the episodes in in like you know order because they like when you group the episodes the way that they are happen chronologically in the timeline of the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. uh, uh, they form neat little arcs. It's like these are complete whole narrative ideas. So I don't know if it was just they, that they had different teams working on different storylines at different times. And when one episode was done, they just aired it or what or how the hell that happened. I don't know. But it was <laughs> annoying. Uh, and now there's going to be another season soon cool. enough because um, it had been off the air for a long time unfinished when Disney uh, Disney bought it. Or Disney bought Lucasfilm, and I think the show kind of the show got canceled or fell by the wayside, and mm-hmm. they started doing Rebels. Um, and there was such a you know a fan fan response to say, "Hey, let Christopher Filoni finish the Clone Wars and let us see you know what is supposed to happen right. before Episode Three. We you know we never got to finish that and and finish these characters' arcs, and so that's happening now." Uh, and I'm excited for that. We get to see the Siege of Mandalore, which should be a, a good time. I'm not a nerd. <laughs> you know, I had a Siege of my Mandalore. I had to uh, go in and have that. I had went to a chiropractor. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they uh, they completely they twisted it out, got it got it going again. It's all loose. It's important to get your Mandalore loose. It is important. You don't want a sieged up Mandalore. Yeah, you don't want a sieged up Mandalore because no. uh, it makes it really tough when you're trying to fly around on jetpacks. and Sure. Uh, shoot people with, uh, you know, cable wrist wrist mounted cable launchers and. How did Boba Fett become? <laughs> oh, he's a Mandalorian. Gotcha. Yeah. What are you, you just lost all fucking Star Wars nerd cred <laughs> with me? Come on. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't, it's a Mandalorian bounty hunter. <laughs> well, he's a clone of a Mandalorian right. bounty hunter. It's clone of his father, who was a Mandalorian bounty mm-hmm. hunter. Yeah. Uh, a Hounty Bunter. A Hounty Bunter. Okay, I think we're at about time. Okay. Uh, somewhere around there, I think. Well, maybe we have about 10 more minutes, because when did you get here? Like 7.40? Well, I got here late. I got here, yeah. I got here a bit late because uh, my wonderful uh, better half uh, had to work late because uh, we work to support our household. What? And, yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? crazy? <laughs> feeding your children feeding her children so that's what I did I stayed home and I I fed them pork chops and rice and uh, and she came home late well she I, I asked her I actually sent her a message I said so just curious what time you're coming home uh, I just want to know what to tell Kale and she went oh I didn't realize Wednesday. it was Wednesday yeah. she doesn't really talk like that <laughs> she doesn't I've met her <laughs> and uh, no she, so, so she came home and and then I came here I stuck our magnetic bottle opener to the uh to the microphone stand and it probably made a noise Boom. but maybe it didn't because shock mounts sure shock mount you you paid money for these shock mounts yeah they better fucking work <laughs> uh, you paid good money for them where what do we have we're having celebration yes I found it was it was on uh, a little bit of a sale this evening the good old thought, sierra nevada ipa i like sierra nevada i never uh, come i never bring shit i or i try not to bring shit yeah it's like if you showed up i think with a six pack of fucking natty ice or something i would probably Make you leave, yeah. <laughs> or at least you'd be surprised. You did okay, okay. You can't say that you never bring shit. I, I brought wild Irish you brought, rose. Yeah, you brought wild Irish rose that one time, <laughs> which, as we established, is wine flavored nail polish remover. <laughs> 
but there's a reason. I mean, if if I show up with something that's shit, yeah, it's there's because a we talked. There's a reason yeah. for it. Yeah, <laughs> it's there's a novelty, and it's because we talked about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I I I just love IPAs. Oh yeah, me too. I I they're I think my favorite my favorite category of beer. Uh, like my favorite single beer mm-hmm. is, well, I mean, I real I, I, you can't go wrong with a Guinness, but uh, do you love an Irish beer? As far as uh, uh, domestics go, I really like Shinerbach. I you think, like Shiner. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think Shinerbach is kind of becoming sort of the it's it's maybe it's not as in vogue with the hipster crowd as maybe it once was, but. Right. Uh, it, like I, I like it that it's slightly fancier and it's a, a dark American beer, mm-hmm. so it's a little bit cheaper than you know an import or something like that. And a, almost every place in town has it on tap. Sure. It, and it's not sharp. It's not sharp. But like this is very yeah. sharp. Yeah, and I I like IPAs yeah. for that. Uh, I like uh I like an Abbey beer. An Abbey. Like yeah. like brewed by monks. Yeah, like like that that style of beer. Yeah. yeah. In fact, they, you know who is it that the Fat Tire makes an Abbey beer? Okay. Uh, that's because I have a daughter named Abby. Oh, hey, there yeah, you go. It's my, it's my, so I like to come home with Abby, but she does, she doesn't <laughs> she, live here. Yeah. No. Is that your oldest daughter? My name? oldest daughter. Okay. You take a guess uh, who's out. You wouldn't know who's out. My name to her after. See if you can do it. metal trivia. <laughs> Abba. <laughs> yes, the famous metal band ABBA. <laughs> well, ABBA's metal as fuck. They're Swedish, right? ABBA's Swedish, right? Where's ABBA from? I'm leaving. Where's ABBA oh, from? They are Swedish. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not metal. I know, I know, but the the joke is, you know, that what if ABBA got back together and came out oh, with dude. a with a black metal album. Oh, I would totally love that they would cover all their stuff in black metal. That'd be great. You are the dancing queen. Someone's probably done that. I Leo that. Moracchioli has probably <laughs> done that. <laughs> or he will. Let's make a request. Leo, hey, Leo. Leo, if you're listening. Yeah, do ABBA. Do ABBA for us, please. Metal <laughs> version of ABBA. Anything ABBA. Fernando. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Abigail by uh, King Diamond. Okay. She was named after a King Diamond album. I, I mean, I know of King Diamond, but I'm not f- familiar with <gasps> We're going to have to do a King Diamond album at some we, point here on this will. podcast. You just make a list, and we'll <laughs> we'll go down it. All right. Uh, and if it fits into a theme month, or, I mean, we probably won't do a theme month for a while. Sure. Uh, unless we think of clever little bits, because this month is just kind of like, whatever. Whatever. I, I feel like we, we can do... Uh, uh, we can do themed bits at um, uh, three, like, <gasps> or six month intervals. So Let's do makeup March. Makeup March. Yeah. Well, oh no, no, we're already in March, aren't we? This will, yeah, this will be coming Take, out oh, in right. March. So I was gonna say we should do bands with makeup. <laughs> that's a lot of. That's the vast know, majority know, of them. That's a lot. Of that could be any of them. <laughs> I know, but I'd be mean, known for doing makeup. Okay. Uh, yeah, March is just kind of a, like a whatever month. Yeah, we're doing a whatever. Uh, uh, this is my band that it, that I can't do otherwise. Yeah. And I'd like to propose that we do this again in September. So right. three and nine. Uh, okay. Two months out of the year. I'm down. We set aside for stuff we like that isn't necessarily metal. So for me, what this month is, uh, and, and for you as well, this, is, we one, this is Wonder Years month. Wonder Years. Uh, so the Wonder Years is my favorite band. They are a pop punk slash sort of indie rock band. Uh, and we're going to be talking about them next week. I think next week we're specifically going to be doing uh, the Greatest Generation, the Greatest Generation, which is their fourth full-length album that yep. came out in 2013. And then the week after, I would like you to listen to both. Uh, and you can, I mean, you can obviously be doing. So we'll this do two weeks in a in row. We'll interim. do Wonder Years. Two weeks in a row, no, or not two weeks in a row. We can go back to you the week after next, right. and then. Go back into the Wonder Years so you have maybe a palate cleanser or something or <laughs> more time to listen right. to because I think the last the the last episode of the month with me, uh, we're gonna do sort of a double thing mm-hmm. and I'll have you listen to uh, 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 No Closer to Heaven and Sister Cities. Okay, also uh, all by is, the Wonder Years. Yep, all by the Wonder Years. So you've got time until the end of the month to, to listen and absorb that because I think the I'm gonna get really deep. With uh, my explanations and and <laughs> right. whatnot on the Wonder Years, because I would hope it's, so. since they're you know they are my favorite band, so they're they tend to be the band that I relate to the most and understand the lyrics of the most. Because 
I think Soupy has a very uh, uh, it's I wouldn't call it necessarily a nuanced style, but it is it's it's a very his lyrics are extremely honest, and so there are. <laughs> Like there's not a ton of like really deep metaphors where it's like, oh, I got to figure out what this means. It's like, no, it's fairly clear, but it's still clever and it's still, you know, something that maybe somebody else wouldn't have written. So I'd like to uh, propose what to do the one in between. Yes, please. So when I was uh, 15 years old, I was living in the Philippines Mm -hmm. and uh, for my birthday, my my buddies uh, decided we were going to go to our first rock concert. And we went to our okay. first rock concert, independent of adults, just what we wanted to go see. And okay. it was in Manila, the Philippines. All right. Uh, opening up for this band was a little girl who sang uh, uh, many different songs in the Filipino tradition and the okay. Filipino national anthem. That's pretty cool. Followed by British new wave band Duran Duran. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm into it. All I'm right. into it. We'll get deep into deep into your musical memories here. Okay. Your first show. My first my first rock show. And it was funny because it was me and uh, my, my friends who were Filipino brothers and the Nefrata brothers. Hey, Chris and Cliff. They're not listening. <laughs> it was in the Nefrata brothers. My brother. My brother. Hey, my brother. Uh, not really my brother. But he's my brother. My brother. Uh, Joshua Burris, who was uh, uh, there with us. Okay. And I remember it was me and the Nefrata brothers mouthing along and singing with every song because we knew all these Duran Duran songs. All right. And, and Josh looking just bored <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> oh, I, I am really into it. I, all right. I really like this idea. <laughs> all right. I really like this idea. So, yeah, next week is The Greatest Generation by The Wonder Years. After that, is there a specific Duran Duran album? Uh, Arena. I want to listen to Arena, Arena because, because it is their live album. It was their okay. big live album. Arena by Duran Duran, and then week after we'll do a double feature with No Closer to Heaven uh-huh. and their most recent album, Sister Cities. People don't realize just how much Duran Duran has influenced the metal music that I've written. Really? Yeah, if, yeah, if you listen to it, you go, wow, there's something about this that I, I can't put my finger on. It's yeah, that it's heavy Duran oh, yeah. Duran factor. <laughs> You can never account for the Duran Duran factor. <laughs> no one expects the Duran Duran factor. <laughs> People say there's no accounting for taste. Not true. <laughs> what is true, however, is there's no accounting for Duran Duran. <laughs> you never know what he's up to. You don't. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's the that's the roadmap for the month. Um, if you like this sort of thing, uh-huh. uh, just sort of freeform bullshitting about music, uh, well, re- Sort of free form. We have a loose structure anyway. A loose structure. But uh, yeah, if you if you like us just talking, please head on into your interwebs. I mean, you're on. You're listening to a podcast. You're sure. on the internet. You're on the interwebs anyway. So open up your Facebook. Uh-huh. Go uh, search the search Bronze Medalist podcast. You'll find us there. Give us a like. Uh, share our posts there. You can also go on Twitter if you got that, and find us the same thing, Bronze Medalist, and uh, retweet our stuff. And favorite our stuff if you sure. like. We usually only post the links, but that's all you need, I think. <laughs> get links in front of faces, people. And uh, what what is the the main thing you can get? Well, you can get this on your your iTunes, and you can yeah. get this on uh, what is the the Libsyn. Libsyn is the is the main one I use. I might have to look at Stitcher at some point and mm-hmm. uh, some other things, but uh, yeah, iTunes and Libsyn. Although I need to uh, begin to addressing iTunes sent me an email today Uh about how apparently they don't like that like certain things that they don't like in their podcast listings and one of them is when you put the episode number in the title which I've always done really yeah I I I don't know so I'll I'll address that for uh, iTunes listeners out there all right anyhow uh, that's gonna do it for us tonight thank you very much for listening to another episode I'm Kale I'm OJ Congratulations. Congratulations.